Hi folks, welcome to my channel. My name is Kate Godwin, aka Neon Fuzz Studio, and I'm so happy you're here today because we are going to be making four different unique hair accessories, two types of scrunchies, adorable hair bows, and some headbands. These are awesome projects if you are new to crochet, knitting, all that, so let's hop to it. So for your first project, you will need some bulky weight yarn, a corresponding crochet hook. This yarn um, I found it's up well with about a 12 millimeter hook, so something like this, bulky, super bulky, whatever you've got, and a hair tie. And to get started, I am just going to tie a really super slip knot. To start, we're going to be crocheting single crochets all the way around my hair tie. So I'm going to insert my hook under my hair elastic and just pull up a loop through that. And slip through. All right. Now I'm just going to chain to get myself started and I am attached. Now I'm just going to start single crocheting all the way around. Already I've got, I don't know, seven or so single crochets going. Um, and you can see the, the hairband is peering through, peeking through. So what I'm gonna do is just scrunch these because I want to single crochet all the way around about as densely as I can. Okay. It's getting pretty hard to add anymore, and I'm seeing it start to do this little wrinkly, buckly thing, so I think that's about good. And I'm just going to find where my first stitch was, about here, and I am going to do a little slip stitch to join this in the round. Next step is to do a row of double crochets. Uh, one thing that I love about this project is that it's pretty much the two most simple stitches that you have in crochet. So I am going to um, begin my next row with a couple of chains. I like to chain two pretty loose chains to start my double crochet row. Some people do three chains. To make a really beautiful scrunchy shape, we're going to be doing some increases on this row, which means at every other stitch, you'll be setting in two double crochets instead of just one. So to begin, I will start with one double crochet. So yarn over, insert it into my first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through two. And now in my next stitch, I'm gonna set in two double crochets. Then I'll do one double crochet, two double crochets, one, two. And that'll give us a super nice wavy kind of shape to our scrunchie. I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. It's taken on a really nice shape. It's got lots of scrunch to it. It's finished. I love it. I think it's so cute. It actually kind of matches the headband project that we're going to be doing in a minute, but let's try it out. Okay, first on the wrist. Super roughly, super adorable. I really like it. I think it's perfect. I found that for the weight of yarn I'm using, which is pretty bulky, um, about 40 or so, 30 to 40 would do it. Um, but it's really up to you. I think this is just the density that I was going for. I love it. All right, so for our next project, we are going to be making these adorable hair bows. I have seen this sort of little delicate hair bow floating around the internet. Hair bows, ribbons, that sort of thing have been all the rage and fit in really well with, I think, like a sort of ballet core aesthetic. And basically all it is is a long 
I-cord. So if you know how to knit, you probably already know how to make an I-cord. It's super simple. I personally have a lot of hand pain from knitting, so I don't do it so much, um, which is why I got this knitting mill. It's really, really great. It's by Prim, P-R-Y-M, and um, I ordered it online. It was about 20 US dollars, and um, yeah, it works really, really well, even though there were mixed reviews, so I don't know if you should get it, but it works well for me making super simple, not too long cords. Uh, I found that a cord of about 20 inches does the trick for me, so if you want to grab your knitting needles and get started, or if you also have a knitting mill at home and want to make some adorable hair bows, I've got this um, merino wool, which is really, really soft and nice, and um, it made beautiful soft bows. Um, it's kind of a nice yarn to be using for hair bows, but honestly I don't mind because it barely uses any. Like, this uses so little material, even less than the last project. I have also been experimenting with um, like a sort of fluffier um, yarn that has some like mohair content. This is like a mohair silk, which with a little bit of wool, which once again, um, this is kind of a nice yarn to be using for little, little hair bows that are kind of trendy, but I do think they're super adorable and I think these little bows could double as other things as well um, for the future when hair bows inevitably go out of style. All right, so I just got started and maybe I was a little careless, but this is exactly what you wanna see not happening. This where the yarn is building up and it's not going through the tube. This is the exact worst thing that could happen. So I'm gonna have to start over, but that's okay, it's the process and I'm new to this. Alright, so I have been holding up this to compare um, for length and because I want the color change to happen at about the same point. So this one has more pink than purple and this one will have more purple than pink and they'll be kind of like twins, um, which I really, really love. And um, I am all about tying knots in my um, crochet projects. So what I'm going to do is actually cut this and tie a magic knot. Um, I've actually found that a magic knot works really well here. Um, I was really worried that it was going to clog up the machine and create like a small disaster for myself the first time I did it and I was going to ruin a project. So, all right, I've got my color change all worked up and just while I'm cranking this color change in, I like to go a little more slowly than usual just to make sure the knot doesn't gum up the machine, but there we go, it's already, it's already there. That just really took a few turns and we have changed colors. I think I've actually got plenty of length on here. Now I'm gonna show you how to finish it. I don't know if this is the official way to do it. This is just how I made it up. But basically I clipped the end and I did a little bit of extra length because I might unravel a little bit um, to close it off. And then what I do is I just crank that little end through the mill, pull it off. And these are my favorite little snips because you can use them with one hand, which I think is really nice. And um, I find that there's less pain doing this motion than like putting your fingers through like little scissory type things. Even though those, those, all those little like crane scissors and things are really aesthetic. These are just my favorite things ever. And um, I actually found that I can sharpen them on my scissor sharpener. So um, even though I've had these for like five to seven years, I recently sharpened them and they're good as new. So keep the things you have and sharpen them and use them forever. Okay, so, oh my gosh, this is so adorable. So I am going to put both of these little hair bows into my hair. Uh, I really like this. I'm like the, uh, you know, the, 
the clown version of Wednesday, Wednesday Adams once again. Clown style? Colorful style? I don't know. Something about the outfit, you know? But that's the look! While I've busted out the knitting mill, I am just going to go ahead and make a pink mohair version of this. So I once again have a twin set. Um, I love the like two-tone jester 50-50 <laughs> thing. Um, so I'm gonna have a pink one and a green one. It's one of my favorite color combos. have my pink mohair bow finished, well soon to be bow. I've got my green that I had already made and um, I've already got my hair divided so I'm just going to do straight up pigtails. Um, this way you can see how the bow looks longer. Um, you might have noticed that uh, my cats woke up and they are here and Donut is hungry. The big one is Donut who you saw in my lap, this little one is Albie, so I am just gonna put these in my hair and then um, play with them and give them a little food cause, uh, oh lord. <laughs> when they're hungry, they're hungry. Hi bees, I'm gonna feed you in a minute. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the final look. These are the hair bows. Like I said, about 20 inches does the trick. Cats are fed, everyone's happy. Let's get back to it. Next up, we are going to make some adorable scrunchies. I think they make really awesome decoration for your arm. I like a really dramatic scrunchie for that reason, um, but you can kind of make yours however you'd like. I've made a bunch of different types of these crochet scrunchies. Um, they're a little more detailed and it's gonna take longer than the last few projects, but uh, you can work your way up to this and it really only takes a couple of hours max depending on the speed of your crochet. I've got this scrunchie with this like nice little scallop decoration here and um, I think it kind of looks like a bagel. Um, <laughs> I've got this check scrunchie that I just made up last night. I'm not going to show you how to make this one because it's a little more complicated and advanced. And then I've got this one. And it uses this double crochet rib stitch. And I think this is a really simple way to get the ribbing effect with crochet. And it's really fast, so it's double crochet in the back loop only of each stitch. So yeah. So grab whatever color or colors you would like to use and let's get started. To get started, I have some DK weight cotton yarn. This is about an 8.6 if um, that's the language you speak or a DK weight. I find using a lightweight yarn like this um, makes it possible to scrunch nicely. I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook, which is what's recommended with this yarn. But to get started, I'm going to tie my handy little slip knot slip it on my hook and I'm using double crochets here and just to make my life a little bit easier I am going to do a row of foundation double crochets. Um, I think that that just is really simple and nice looking for this but you could also just chain to get started so I am going to chain or foundation double crochet 20. <laughs> So now I've got my 20 foundation double crochet. I am going to do two loose, loose, two loose, two loose turning chains because I mentioned that's what I like to do. You could also do three tighter turning chains. And now here's the thing. So I'm getting ready to double crochet. I've yarn overed. And instead of going into both of these loops here and pulling through my yarn, I'm only going to go kind of through the top and into the back loop. And that's where I pull up my yarn. And then I finish my double crochet as I would usually. This might be something you already know how to do. This is a double crochet in the back loop only, but um, if not, here you go. And I'm just gonna go all the way across. <laughs> As you can see, it is the next day. I'm wearing a different outfit and uh, I have done my 20 rows. 
Amazing, it looks so great. So I actually just have one more stitch um, because I'm going to show you how I like to change color. For my last double crochet, I'm just going to start with a yarn over, go into my stitch just like normal, gonna pull through my first two loops, and then now instead of yarning over and pulling through, I'm going to place my new color on here. And now I'm going to pull through. So that new loop that I have is my new color, which is this pretty green. And um, yeah, it's pretty easy with this next step. You just do 20 more rows. <laughs> my 40 rows finished and the next thing I need to do is seam this up into a giant circle. That is my slip stitch edge and you can see it from this side as well. It looks pretty good. Um, the next step is to seam it all up. So what you're going to do is take your hair tie and you want to make sure that your seam, whatever you want your seam to be, goes on the inside. And you don't have to pull the whole thing through right away, but basically you want to maneuver it so that your hair tie starts to be wrapped by your crochet work. And then you're going to crochet, single crochet, the edges together, putting two single crochets in the edge of each stitch. I am going to get started on this and then I actually have to go and meet a friend for coffee here in Oslo and it has been snowing for the past few days. We've got over a foot of snow on the ground and it's very beautiful but I really need to layer up. <laughs> Day and I have finished seaming up my Jester scrunchie, so I'm just gonna try it on. Ooh, yeah. That's it. Okay, one more project. For the final project, I'm going to show you how to take an old headband or a headband form or whatever you have available to you and crochet around it. This is a super simple single crochet um, wrap basically that I made for this old headband. I can try it on for you. Go ahead and grab a headband. I have this puffy headband that I'm going to use and Puffy headbands were like a huge trend a few years back and I loved this puffy headband. Um, it actually really changed my opinion of headbands um, because I love anything puffy, dramatic that can add like a, a layer of contrast to an outfit, things like that. But I find myself wearing this less than I did a few years ago and I think part of that is my wardrobe has become more colorful and this is like a beautiful light blue but it's just not the statement that I'm looking for anymore so I think crocheting around this will give it a lot more relevance to my closet now and um, hopefully I will wear it a lot more. So that's the plan and for this I want to go for a scrappy look because um, I've been playing a lot with scraps and um, crocheting with scraps and I just I think it's really exciting.
decided that it's time for another increase and one thing I wanted to mention is that when I do an increase on an even number row um, say to start I like to do um, an odd row the next time so they alternate so whatever you did the first time try to land on a different row the next time and I'm thinking that it's looking pretty darn good. I'm really really happy with the pattern and the color changes and how the knots are so super hidden and as I've been going I've just been comparing it. I do stretch it around the headband a good bit so um, you'll notice kind of unstretched. It, it doesn't look like I'm quite done yet but um, I think it looks better stretched and then also on the underside where the radius is actually smaller, uh, math stuff, um, then it won't like bunch up basically. So I'm gonna stop at 46 rows. Love the colors. I think it looks really, really awesome. The next step is to seam it up. And to do so, I have not yet cut my yarn because I want to make sure to leave quite a long tail. I am going to just pull this through to close off my work and switch to a tapestry needle. First step is to seam the end closed kind of like that. What I like to do is kind of like a, um, a whip stitch around and just catching one edge from each, hi, each row of the yarn. Um, and that gives a really flat seam. gonna switch and use the tail that I started with to pull closed um, my original foundation single crochets and now what I'm going to do is tie these together into a double or triple knot these two strands so let's do a little try on Oh my gosh, I love it. It kind of looks like I'm wearing a crown um, and it's just so fun. This is exactly what I'm looking for in my closet. Something that I love about this technique um, is that it allows you to almost sample how all of your different colors look one next to the other, next to the other and you just come up with all these unique com combinations. And for me, it gives me so much inspiration for projects moving forward. I just think it's, it's so fun and stimulating. And as I was doing it, it was just like so satisfying because if you're just using one color or you have a color pattern and you're alternating, you can stop thinking. You can kind of turn off your brain and just let your hands move. But with this, every row, um, I mean, sometimes every stitch, I'm evaluating what I'm doing, I'm looking at the whole thing, I'm holding it up, I'm looking at it on the headband, and I'm really thinking, and I'm thinking about where I'm going to cut the yarn, and how I want it to look, and the color balance, and the combinations. I really like to make sure I try out every color next to every other color. Yeah, I just find this, like, even though it looks super random, I find that so much more thought goes into doing this than like doing this or doing this or um, even though this is quite a complex pattern, even doing this takes less thought for me than choosing the colors on this, which is so, so fun. All right, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments below which of these hair accessories you would like to try out and don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at neonbuzzstudio and I'll see you next time.